Hey Artie, Jasmine and Autumn. I uh, just got back from the wedding and I told you I'd uh, at least make a video showing you the suit. Um, I wanted to do this before I went, but getting ready and stuff ran out of time to do it. So I think I'm going to read a chapter of Frindle, go to bed, and tomorrow I'll make another video for you guys. You know what I'm saying? Sometime. You know what I'm saying? Tomorrow morning or afternoon. And, um, yeah, I, I still, uh, really miss you guys. And, um, I wish I could be talking to you guys on the phone, but uh, the only way I can document or, you know what I'm saying, um, make some kind of virtual time capsule, I guess, um, is with these like videos, so at least I don't feel like I'm missing my good mornings and good nights, and uh, I don't want you guys to feel like you are missing them either, even if you see them all in one shot um, and stuff. Well, when you finally do see them, at least you uh, will know that your dad is thinking of you every single day, all day. I don't know these videos aren't very long, but if I could pick up a phone, I could go there. I would, but um, I have to be in front of the computer, and you know what I'm saying, and be able to upload them to YouTube and then Facebook. And have uh, like internet connection in order to get these put out. And the bigger the video, the longer it takes to upload. And I just, um, yeah, I guess I'd have to be able to talk to you more if I could call you in the car doing errands and things like that. Or things like that. But I just. This is all I've got. This is the best I have to give you right now. So let me uh, read a chapter from Spent Frindle and then uh, wish you guys good night. So, chess. Hmm. Freedom of the Press Judy Morgan was a reporter for the Westfield Gazette, the local newspaper. Westfield was a quiet little town. There was the occasional burglary, the teenagers would get rowdy once in a while, and there was some shouting at the town council or the planning board now and then. But mostly things were calm and orderly in Westfield, and every Thursday, the Westfield Gazette proved it. Ted Bell sold advertisements for the paper, and he had a daughter in fourth grade at Lincoln Elementary. He told Judy that a bunch of fifth graders were making trouble and were not obeying teachers anymore, that there was something about a secret code word they are all using, and half the students had been kept after school one day last week, including his own little girl. The only other story Judy was working on was about 18 new trees that were going to be planted along East Main Street. The trees could wait. This thing at the elementary school sounded like a real story. So Judy Morgan showed up at Lincoln Elementary School at 3 o'clock the, the day after Miss Chisholm had been to visit Nick's parents. The sign on the door said all visitors must report to the office, and she did. On the bulletin board outside the office, Judy saw Miss Granger's notice about the punishment for using the word Frindle. She stepped back two paces, aimed her camera at the notice, and snapped a photo. She read the notice once more, and then stepped into the office. Miss Breed, the school secretary, looked up and smiled. May I help you? Yes, I'm sure you can. My name is Judy Morgan, and I work for the Westfield Gazette. I'd like to know about that poster outside the office, the one about this word Frindle. Who should I talk to? Miss Reed stopped smiling. She was sick and tired of anything to do with that word. For the past week, her phone had been ringing off the hook. 
if it wasn't a parent complaining about a child who had to stay out of school, it was someone from the school board trying to get in touch with Ms. Chatham or Ms. Granger. Ms. Freed pursed her lips and narrowed her eyes. She said, you'll have to speak with the principal. Let me see if Ms. Chatham is free. She was. There isn't a principal alive who won't find the time to talk to someone from the local newspaper. The reporter was invited into Ms. Chatham's office. Judy noticed right away that the principal was not comfortable talking about this stuff. When asked about the poster outside the office door, Ms. Chatham laughed and said, Oh, that? It's nothing, really. Some kids have been playing a prank, and it was time to put a stop to it. The principal's laugh sounded phony to Judy Morgan, and did that, did that notice put an end to the prank? I heard that a lot of children were kept out of school last week. Would you tell me a little about that? Parents would like to know what's going on. Ms. Chatham looked like, well, like a kid who had been sent to the principal's office. She squirmed a little in a chair and tried to smile. She said, well, we do still have a little problem, but it's under control. Ms. Granger may have overreacted a bit. I don't think the children have really been trying to be disrespectful. They're just having some fun, and it's more like a difference of opinion. And then Ms. Chatham went on to tell the reporter what she knew about the word Prindle and how it had become popular among the students. Judy Morgan took careful notes, and when the principal had finished, Judy said, Would you mind if I asked Ms. Granger a few questions? She had said, No, not at all. But uh, Judy could tell that the principal wished she would just go away. What could she say, though? Ms. Chatham couldn't very well keep the reporter away from Ms. Granger, because after all, America is a free country with a free press. If Judy really wanted to, she would talk to Ms. Ranger sooner or later. It was sooner. In three minutes, Judy Morgan was standing at the door of room 12, looking in at Ms. Granger. There were about 15 children sitting at desks, scattered on the room, busy writing out their 100 sentences. She knocked, and the teacher and students looked up from their work. I'm Judy Morgan from the Westfield Gazette, Ms. Granger. May I have a word with you? Ms. Granger stood and came out into the hallway and closed the door. Judy could see past her and saw that every kid in the room was straining to listen. Judy noticed Miss Granger's eyes right away. Gray, maybe flecked with a little gold and very sharp, but not hard or mean, just bright and strong. The reporter didn't waste words, so I hear that you plan to stop the students from using their new word. How goes the battle? Miss Granger did not smile, and her eyes got even brighter. First of all, it is not a battle. I am merely helping my students see that this foolishness should stop. Such a waste of time and thought. There's no reason to invent a new and useless word. They should each learn to use the words we already have. But of course, all of this is just a silly fad. And when you add an E to fad, you get fade. And I predict that this fad will fade. Judy looked up from her notepad and asked, Any idea how it all gets started? Ms. Granger's eyes seemed to almost catch on fire at that question, and she said, Yes, I have a very good idea how it all gets started. It was one young man's idea, a fifth grade student named Nicholas Allen. And now you will have to excuse me, Miss Morgan, for I have papers, I must grade. And with a brief firm handshake, Miss Granger ended the interview. The reporter didn't leave right away. She walked back to the hallway and sat on a bench outside the office so she could look over her notes to make sure they made sense. It took her about five minutes. Then Judy stood up, put her notebook into her large black purse, waved goodbye to a frowning Miss Reed, and headed out the door. As she walked to the parking lot, five or six kids who had just finished writing the sentences for Miss Granger came out and out the door. Judy walked beside them, listening to them laugh and joke. Then she asked them, Why do you kids keep saying Prindle? Don't you hate staying at the school? A boy, who was almost falling over from the weight of his backpack, looked up at her and smiled. It's not so bad. There's always a bunch of my friends there. I've written that sentence 600 times now. And the kid said Miss Granger didn't even look at that, their punishment papers anymore. They were sure because you were supposed to write, I am writing this punishment with pen. Everyone was writing the word Prindle every fourth or fifth sentence, and Miss Granger hadn't said anything. One girl bragged that she had written the word Prindle 45 times on a sheet today. She grinned and said, that's a new record. And this boy named Nick, Judy, asked, has he had to stay after school too? Kid giggled and a tall boy with reddish brown hair and glasses said, Ms. Granger has kept Nick out of school so much that everyone thinks she wants to adopt him. The reporter smiled and said, Do you think I could find Nick and talk to him this afternoon? The boy looked at Judy for a second and then said, I don't think Nick would want to talk to you right now. He, you, uh, he might say something stupid and get himself in trouble. Then he grinned at his friends. The kids laughed and poked and punched each other and headed off down the block. Judy drove back to her office and started writing. Next morning, a brown envelope arrived. At the Gazette office, addressed to Judy Morgan, and below her name was written Prendel Story. When Judy opened it, there was a class picture, the fifth grade at Lincoln Elementary School. Ms. Granger and the six over other teachers were standing at the ends of the rows, and the kids were dressed neatly, hair all combed, but there was something odd about the picture. For it looked closely, I saw that each kid was holding up a pen, and each little mouth was puckered in the same way. She was puzzled for a second, but then she said softly, Of course, they're all saying Prendel. Written on the back of the picture, a neat cursive rose, Third row, fifth from left. Judy looked at the picture, and as she saw the same grinning red-haired boy with glasses that she had talked to, uh, talked to in the school parking lot yesterday, she chuckled and said, "Well, well, well. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Nicholas Allen." 
pretty clever. So I am gonna go. I'm tired. Uh, it's been a long day. And so I'm off to bed and I'm gonna wish you guys good night. So good night, Artie, Jasmine, and Autumn. Be good for your mom. As always, and Artie, be a good example for your sisters. Love you guys.